Good evening to each and every one of you. Why don't you all stand up to read the word of God just for a few seconds if you can. You've got your Bibles, you can open and turn to the book of Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 to verse 16. We're going to read first. We are looking at this time from the series, The Powerful Glorious Return of Jesus Christ. The third part in the series and in this, we're going to see that the Lord is the Lord who wars on your behalf. So let us read from Revelation chapter 19, from verse 11 till verse 16, all together as the body of Christ. Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him has called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself he was clothed with a robe dipped in blood and his name is called the word of god the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen white and clean followed him on white horses now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron he himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God and he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords thank you, you may be seated why don't you praise him once again clap your hands and give praise unto this King of Kings and this Lord of Lord Jesus Christ lunar laser ranging experiment is something which measures the distance between the surface of earth and the moon using laser ranging the first successful tests that were done was in 1962 when they wanted to measure the distance between earth and moon from mit massachusetts institute of technology and they succeeded in observing the laser pulses reflected from the moon's surface using a laser with a millisecond pulse length but that was not very accurate because what comes back to earth was not very strong but they were able to attain greater accuracy when the Apollo 11 mission launched from earth and the very first astronaut set foot on moon on July 21st 1969 they installed a retro reflector on the moon so that they could measure the exact distance from this retro reflector that was put there again on Apollo 15 mission they set another much bigger three times bigger reflector there so that they could be able to look at it and the lasers as observatories on earth were aimed at these retro reflectors planted on the moon during the Apollo 11 14 and 15 and the distance they were able to measure that is there between Earth and the Moon was 3,85,000.6 kilometers. That is from the center of the Earth to the center of the Moon. And after that, they set on a series of long-term experiments. And they were able to find out that actually the Moon is spiraling away from the Earth. That every year, nearly four centimeters or almost two inches it is going further and further away they set this up as i told you from the first mission on july 21st 1969 in the apollo 11 and from that time they've been trying to measure and it has been slipping away from earth if you look at the theory that evolution is gift those who do not believe that god created the heavens and the earth in six days he created them they have their own theories and one such scientist, Doris Brewer of the German Aerospace Center, said in a statement in her paper published on the Journal of Science Advances that the moon was formed around 4.42 billion years ago. 4.42 billion years ago. They say that when another cosmic object hit at Earth, it took away a big chunk away from Earth and then it became the moon. But if you look at their present day calculation that the moon is spiraling away or moving away two inches or four centimeters per year, then 
according to the bible we are right now 6000 years from the day the earth and the heavens were created and the moon should have moved 240 meters because of that therefore to move one kilometer the moon will take 24,000 years so 4.5 billion years means that the moon would have been in the beginning revolving around earth 1,87,000 kilometers closer than where it is right now right now it is 3,85,000 right now at the present state we have high tides and low tides and every time the moon revolves around there are even land tides you might have not heard most of you know about sea tides when the moon is near the earth's surface it pulls with its gravitational force the water is up and that's how the water rises up and here you can see how in this particular low harbor that when there is a low tide the moon is not near it that the ships are almost on the surface but when there is a high tide they all start floating they know that it happens on a regular basis that's why they put their ships there and then when the high tide comes and they again take the ships out there are even land tides up the gravitational force of the moon is so strong that it pulls actually the mantle of the earth that even the land goes up and comes back down imagine at this distance three lakh odd kilometers that it is got such power that the water gets pulled up that big boats and barges get lifted up those which are hundreds and thousands of tons in weight but imagine it was one lakh eighty seven thousand five hundred kilometers closer what would have happened on earth at that time it almost ripped the mantle of the earth the water almost would have got pulled the moon would almost come back to the earth and the gravitational force of the earth and the moon would make them both collide but if that had happened then definitely the earth wouldn't be there nor the moon would be there so therefore this proves that the evolutionary theorists are wrong that if it is moving four centimeters or two inches every year then 4.5 billion years ago they have hardly been able to go around or revolve around the earth these are some of the things that they say which are not true you've got to look at a lot of other things next service i'll see about what happens on the surface of the moon that will again prove that it is not exactly like what they say 4.5 billion years ago that the moon was created this is one of the things which show that their theories have no evidence and they have no proof we are looking at the cosmic terrestrial order of events and god has said that he created the heavens and the earth in six days you go to genesis chapter one he's the one who said oh let there be light and there was light and that was the first day and then it says in verse 7 chapter 1 that god made the firmament and divided the waters from which were under the firmament and so the firmament was called heaven and that was the second day and then if you see he says in verse 10 that god called the dry land earth and then the waters he called sea and that it was good and then is when he created grass and the herbs that are there and God again saw and told that it was good on the third day and verse 14 tells about how finally God created lights in the firmament of heaven to divide day from the night and he said let them be for signs and seasons for days and years let them be for lights in the firmament of heavens to give light on the earth and it was so and then God made verse 16 in genesis chapter 1 it says god made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and that was the fourth day when he created it god is the one who created and jesus christ who came did not say that what was written in the book of genesis was just a story he believed in it he spoke about moses and he spoke about the Torah and he confirmed it so what is written in the word of God is true though people might find it hard to believe still the word of God is true and the miracles of God are true and very soon they will see the son of man the son of God Jesus Christ coming and standing on the clouds and calling out and the graves all around every 
part of the world in every country in every city wherever there is a graveyard those who are buried in the name of Jesus Christ will rise again there will be explosions all around there will be rumbling people now put thick granite stones and they build it up with almost bricks and concrete boxes and hard wooden boxes and then metal boxes and seal it imagine that breaks the power that is needed to break just one grave and imagine there are hundreds and thousands of graves if you're living near Kielpok cemetery the shaking that will take place there that people will think that there is an earthquake that's how powerful it will be he called for them and the dust will become once again human being at the voice of its creator when his voice is heard when the sound reaches and touches the dust it will become again man they will witness it they will see it and they will experience it themselves and even if they do not believe at the time again when he comes the second time that time he will be visible for the entire world that's what we have been seeing that is the truth that is what the word of god has said the sign of jesus christ will appear in the sky and all the people in all the earth will see it they will tremble and then they will not be able to refute it they will not be able to explain it with signs they will not be able to come up with a theory because god works in a completely different dimension in a different realm that the laws of physics which apply to the natural realm will not apply jesus christ himself when he rose from the dead when the doors were shut they were locked inside a room he appeared inside he walks through walls he doesn't need the door to be opened and then when he had bread he had a physical form and he ate bread he broke the bread and he ate in the midst of them he had a physical body and then again he disappeared he did it again and again can you explain that with signs no you cannot unless you agree and believe that god works in mysterious ways that's what we've been seeing the past few months the cosmic terrestrial order of events first will be the beginning of the birth pangs that's what we are in right now the beginning of sorrows the beginning of the birth of the new age on earth the end of the present age will come the end of the church age will take place the church will be lifted up church doesn't mean any building that has a steeple and a bell and a cross it is those who are committed who have followed the word of god who are born again baptized in water baptized in the holy spirit who are connected with god who have the holy spirit indwelling them they will be the ones when the holy spirit is lifted up when the restrainer is taken out of the way they will also be lifted up with him you will also be lifted up that will be the rapture of the disciples of christ and then that will make the antichrist the idol and the false prophet appear in the holy of holies in israel and then that great tribulation will start the days which have never been seen on earth and after that will be the judgment on the wicked and then finally the second coming of jesus christ and he will come with power and great glory as we read in book of revelation chapter 19 and we've been seeing that based on matthew chapter 24 verse 30 the sign in the sky will appear and all will see christ's sign in the sky and all people will lament and wail and jesus will open up the heaven for all the sinless qualified rider on the white horse you got to know that you're in the supernatural war and that is what we are going to look at this time there is a war that has been going between the devil and mankind the devil's children and god's children this supernatural war means that you're under attack but you don't have to worry for you are god's weapon you have god's armor you are wrestling against the devil's forces and you need to put on the armor and you need to press on don't find it strange that you have to do this because jesus christ himself the bible says makes war that's how he came revelation 19 was 11 tells us he will come again and he makes war he goes to war at that time he wages war righteously this is there in the bible why i'm sharing this with you is because many of the christians and the churches just look at the first time jesus came on earth he was born as a 
baby in a manger and the focus is always or mostly on that and some churches focus on the crucifixion and very few focus on the resurrection you can go to a church in different parts of the world and you might see a crucifix you might even see Jesus still hanging on the cross in that crucifix that is fine yes he did that but that's not how he is right now and some churches even are called as church of the infant Jesus Christ there's nothing wrong with it but the infant Jesus needs saving himself his mom and dad had to carry him and flee to Egypt when Herod wanted to kill all the babies he couldn't save himself that why God sent an angel and told them take the baby and get out of this place that's not the Jesus that we need to look to yes we look to the Jesus on the cross and we definitely do look to Jesus on the resurrection day on a Sunday morning when he rose up gloriously but you got to look at the Christ who was revealed to the church that's what we will be seeing in the coming week for the first time when Jesus came he was the Savior and the sacrifice but the second time when he will come he will be the judge and the executioner he will give the judgment and he will be the one who will be the executioner at the time this word will shock many people if I modify the word I'll have to say he'll be the judge and he'll be the one who will kill at that time that is based on the Bible the first time he came he saved others but himself he could not save the second time when he comes he will strike others and no one will be able to strike him the first time he came Jesus came gently on a donkey the second time he will charge on a war horse from heaven down the first time he came he was born in a small town in a manger the second time Jesus will step into Jerusalem and sit on his throne in his temple in the Holy of Holies in physical form and everyone will be able to see the first time he came he was born and raised in obscurity that the angels had to go visit some shepherds and say go and see he's in a manger for no one else had gone to see him the wise men came nearly after two years but the second time he will tear the sky open in the dark gloomy bloody moon sky when there is no light when the whole earth is covered in darkness suddenly the sky will roll like a scroll and then he will appear in brightness brighter than the Sun and he'll be seen by all we the church you've got to be ready and willing to accept that and align our lives to Jesus Christ in that form we've got to have our minds renewed for he's the one who makes war the first thing that we can see from this verse Revelation chapter 19 verse 11 the second is he fights for you you see the church right now it is persecuted in the world Israel persecuted in Egypt is a parallel to how the church is persecuted in the world right now Christians are ridiculed they are mocked they're not taken seriously something you have a weak mind and you're gullible and you're naive that's why you follow Jesus Christ that's why they do not listen to the Word of God just like how in Egypt Israel was persecuted Joseph who went to Egypt is a form as a type of Jesus Christ that's why even Messiah the Christ is called Meshach ben Yosef for that's how he came the first time Messiah the son of Joseph the one who was bound the one who was carried and taken as a slave the one who was locked up in prison for a crime he did not commit how Jesus was crucified and died on the cross and he had to go to hell and he was locked up there for three days and three nights but he was willing to make himself of no reputation taking the form of a bond servant Philippines chapter Two or seven says and coming in the likeness of men being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross that's how he came the first time but do not look to Jesus only in that form in that state alone be willing to look to Jesus 
as he is revealed in the Bible in the New Testament to the church for he will come as Messiah Ben Dawud he will come as the son of David Messiah the son of King David and he will sit on the throne of his father David Luke 1 32 says the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David Joseph was the reason Egypt prospered he was the one who gave the interpretation of the dream to Pharaoh when he said there'll be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine he was chosen to be the prime minister of Egypt and so he told the Pharaoh what he needs to do that he needs to build storehouses to store all the grain and that's why they did the seven years but Genesis 41 verse 54 onwards it tells that the seven years of famine began to come and the famine was in all the land but in Egypt at that time there was bread the famine was over all the face of the earth Genesis 41 57 says all the countries came to Joseph in Egypt to buy grain because the famine was severe in all lands at the time Joseph is the one who was given the responsibility to open up all that he had stored and so what does he do he gives them grain he gives them bread for the money that they gave in Genesis 47 Genesis 47 verse 14 it tells and he brought the money into Joseph into Pharaoh's house and when they had given all their money the famine had still not been over so money failed they had no more money to buy bread and they were about to die that's when they came again and said money has failed in the land give us bread in Genesis 47 verse 15 so at that time Joseph tells them give me your livestock and I will give you grain instead of that so they give the livestock and then if you see by the time the year ended even all the livestock had been given and so Joseph gave it unto Pharaoh and then it goes to the point again and again till finally they say all we have is our land and our homes and we'll give it to you and they gave it and so all the land in Egypt became the land of Pharaoh's that's what Joseph was able to do and he brought it unto Pharaoh why I'm sharing this with you you've got to see the injustice done to the Israelites at this time is when Pharaoh invites Israel that is Jacob and his sons the children into Egypt in Genesis chapter 45 verse 17 it says Pharaoh said to Joseph say to your brothers do this load your animals and depart and he says bring your father and your households and come to me I will give you the best of the land of Egypt he was not just giving them some land which well, had no value he gave them the best and you will eat the fat of the land that's the word of Pharaoh he was the one who invited Joseph didn't go and say can I bring my family no the Pharaoh is the one who called him there is the reason why I'm sharing all this with you and he sealed his word and was 19 of Genesis 45 the Pharaoh said now you are commanded do this and that's why Joseph brought his entire family and they came and they dwelt in Egypt but the new Pharaoh who had come many years after that forgot that Genesis ends and then comes Exodus where it says a new Pharaoh a new king came over Egypt and he was afraid looking at how they had grown in those few years and so he sets taskmasters upon them and afflicts them with their burden and they built for Pharaoh supply cities they are made slaves and Pharaoh becomes the slave owner those who had come into Egypt to be treated as guests of Pharaoh now have been made into slaves Exodus 1 verse 13 it says Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor and made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and brick and all manner of service why I'm sharing all this with you is because very soon you'll see what Jesus Christ what God is going to do on behalf of Israel because if I share that with you you might at once be like those of the group of haters of God those who are looking at the Bible in a wrong angle in a wrong fashion and manner who do not know the truth who have never even read the Bible who misunderstand God who think God is someone who's sitting in heaven and he's just judging people and punishing people and trying to do evil to people that is not the truth they do not know the entire truth they listen to the lie of the devil 
now you understand how pharaoh was the one who called israel into egypt he was the one who gave them the best of the land he is the one who gave them all that they would ever need but now he's turned around and he's flipped he now does not realizes their value egypt would have not been there if not for joseph and israel at that time but now he's not even letting them go god comes and says let go of my son my first born israel and they are not willing to let go pharaoh says i will not let go of israel who's the law that i should obey his voice in exodus chapter 5 verse 2 and he says no will i let israel go see how boldly is talking against god this god is angry with the wicked every day even right now the church is persecuted christians are persecuted but god is aware of all of that psalm 7 verse 11 says god is angry with the wicked every day psalm 140 verse 12 says i know that the lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and justice for the poor he's a just judge he will not always be silent he will stand up on your behalf he will give you the right judgment and he will give you the right justice and that's what he's going to do on the second return when he comes on a war horse he's going to fight all the wicked and those who have rejected god he will redeem their life from oppression and the violence that they experience and precious shall their blood be in his sight the innocent are killed and murdered even before they are born babies are aborted because it is not convenient to have a baby because they did not plan it for all kinds of reason even in our land there are abortions which are done based on the gender of the baby god is not going to be silent there might be nobody who can speak for a baby who is unborn who's killed in the womb but god will be the one who will cry out for them he will be the one who will take his sword he'll be the one who will fight for them for their blood cries out for justice unto god we were not even allowed to live one day on earth this great injustice was done to us because of certain people who wanted to have a convenient life because they did not value life what are you supposed to do as a church psalm 84 was three god tells defend the poor and fatherless do justice to the afflicted and needy deliver the poor and the needy free them from the hand of the wicked we cannot be silent we cannot watch and be quiet you've got to pray and you've got to defend you've got to deliver you've got to free the innocent the afflicted and needy from the hand of the wicked god says to you in isaiah chapter 1 verse 17 learn to do good seek justice rebuke the oppressor defend the fatherless plead for the widow in jeremiah chapter 22 verse 3 the lord says execute judgment and righteousness and deliver the plunder out of the hand of the oppressor that is why church is placed here or not that is why you have an armor that's why you are a weapon that's why when jesus introduced the very word church for the very first time matthew chapter 16 verse 18 he says i will build my church on the gates of hades will not prevail against it he set the church on a collision path like a missile heading towards the kingdom of devil breaking the gates and delivering those who are bound from the evil oppressor and he has given you the power but has the church become like what god says in jeremiah chapter 5 verse 28 are we silent have you become like this see what the word of god says they have grown fat they are sleek yes they surpass the deeds of the wicked they do not plead the cause the cause of the fatherless yet they prosper and the right of the needy they do not defend as long as i have a job as long as i have food I, as long as i'm fine and healthy my family is fine my wife is fine my husband is fine my children are fine my dog is fine then everything else is secondary they have grown fat they are sleek they surpass the deeds of the wicked they do not plead the cause god is looking and speaking and then he says in the next verse jeremiah chapter 5 verse 29 shall i not punish them 
for these things says the Lord shall I not avenge myself on such a nation as this God expected this in the Old Testament where they did not have the anointing of God only few in the land had it how much more in the New Testament you the church verse 30 he says an astonishing and horrible thing has been committed in the land why because they do not plead the cause of the fatherless and the needy and those who are defenseless they allow the shedding of innocent blood we cannot be silent we've got to pray and ensure that we are on the right side in these last days for all the things that happen when someone stands up and says I will promote abortion you cannot stand with them no matter what they are or who they are which party they belong to you got to be careful if someone stands up and says I will hold the entire state captive that they cannot hear the gospel of Christ that they cannot come unto Jesus then we cannot be silent we cannot say oh let them do whatever I am saved I have my Bible I know how to pray I can sit inside my house even if they'll shut down the churches I'm I think I can make it to heaven so forget about everybody else we cannot be so yes or not when you look at all these verses prayers unto Jesus Christ will be answered and now we have come to the time when in the last days Jesus will pour out his glory upon the church signs and wonders will take place in an incredible fashion and manner the whole earth will see the power of God in these last days with the servants of God I will see in the coming services how it is going to be I will share with you God is the one who says in Exodus chapter 3 verse 7 and the Lord said I have surely seen the oppression of my people have heard their cry for I know their sorrows I've come down to deliver them and to bring them up from the land to a good and large land to land flowing with milk and honey behold the cry of the children of Israel has come to me the Lord sets the battle stage in Egypt at that time he strikes them with ten plagues and then when finally they are allowed to leave Egypt God takes them to a specific location it might look very vulnerable but God is setting up the church in such a position even right now it might look like the church is in a weak position Christians are in a weak position but they are not for God is the one who's leading and guiding his church for here they were set before the sea that they were about to cross but no one had seen on earth the sea being divided and the entire nation walking through the Red Sea and going over to the other side that's why Pharaoh said oh these people are confounded they do not know what is happening they are bewildered by the land and so Pharaoh prepares for war and so he brings his 600 choice chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with captains and all the horses all the horsemen the army and they came there and overtook and they came right to the point where Israel was but God defended and delivered them he was a pillar of fire separating the Egyptians and the church at that time just as how he is separating his called ones the church from the enemy from death and from destruction at this time that's how it is going to be in the coming days you need the very fire and the presence of God to keep you safe you got to be in that secret place of the most high abiding in the shadow of the Almighty without that you might be vulnerable why the Lord is a God who fights for you the Lord fights for you at the time the sea was open Moses takes the children of Israel inside and he tells them stand and see the salvation of God the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace and Pharaoh pursues them into the sea and it says when they went after them in the midst of the sea that's when the Lord starts fighting for them Exodus chapter 14 verse 24 and 25 it says the Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians from the pillar of fire and cloud and he troubled the army of the Egyptians he took off their chariot wheels so that they drove with difficulty the Egyptians said let us flee from the face of Israel for 
the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians this is your Lord he is the one who formed a nation by fighting for them himself they did not fight they didn't have to take a single sword to defend themselves from Egypt at that time but God fought for them this is the same Lord Jesus Christ who will fight for you who is still fighting for you when he is the one who said come and follow me do you want to walk in his footsteps if he is a warrior if he's the one who's fighting how much more should you the church be more like him and he's not weak in battle the Lord is mighty in battle Psalm 24 verse 7 it says lift up your eyes lift up your heads O you gates lift up your everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle if God is fighting how much more you should be like him and fight in this battle another version of the Bible says he is the Lord the war hero he is the Lord the war hero and the Lord has a sword that's what the Bible says even in the Old Testament Psalm 7 verse 11 and 12 it says God is angry with the wicked every day if he does not turn back that is a wicked God will sharpen his sword he is sharpening his sword Deuteronomy 32 verse 41 says if I sharpen my glittering sword how many of the Christians are willing to even read this they might be very uncomfortable they would like the baby in the manger and set up a manger scene how many want to get a big long double-edged sword sharp and glittering and put it there on the showcase and put some focus lights on it in your house right in the hall when the guests come and they say what you got a sword in your house what to say this represents the sword of the Lord If you show them a manger, they'll be like, oh, how cute, how nice, oh, how beautiful this is. But how many want to set up a sword and say, this is the glistening sword of the Lord, this is a representation of Him? But many will be uncomfortable. And when you do not follow the Lord, you will not have the victory the Lord has. You need to be a war hero like your God, Jesus Christ, is. Only then you'll have victory in the coming days. When he is the one saying in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 32, verse 41, if I wealth my glistening sword, my glittering soul, my hand takes hold on judgment. I will render vengeance to my enemies and repay those who hate me. The Lord has instruments of death, not just a sword. Psalm 7, verse 13, it says, he also prepares for himself instruments of death is this in your bible or you never read it or you don't want to look at it you want to act like it's not there second thessalonians chapter 1 verse 6 it says since it is a righteous thing with god to repay with tribulation those who trouble you the church has been troubled and he will repay those who trouble you the sixth is the lord has arrows the same psalm 7 verse 12 it says he bends his bow and makes his ready verse 13 he says he makes his arrow into fiery shafts last and final thing i want to tell you is not only is the lord who is a war hero he's not only mighty in battle not only does he have a sword and instruments of death and bows and arrows he's the lord who always wins hallelujah yes you got to clap your hands and exalt him you got to look at him in such a fashion and manner because that's when you will receive from him victory the mindset that you have the expectation that you have the way in which you see your lord and your god is how you will be able to have success and victory in your life first chronicle chapter 29 verse 7 verse 11 it says yours O lord is the greatness the power the glory and the victory and the majesty to god belongs victory because he has victory you the church will have victory first corinthians 15 54 and 55 says death is swallowed up in victory and hades 
where is your victory you the disciples of Jesus Christ you the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ you will have victory 1 John 5 4 says for whatever is born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that has overcome the world our faith the coming days you need this faith this strong powerful faith to be an overcomer to have victory because I've told you God is gonna give you gifts in the coming days he's gonna give you victory in every part and area of your life and if you want to receive it you got to see Jesus Christ in this fashion in this manner know that he's fighting for you that he's gonna give you deliverance and only then you will be able to receive those gifts the enemy will come right up very close with his chariots with his horses with his weapons to finish you but at that time you've got to have faith in the Lord that's what it says here 1 John 5 4 for whatever is born of God overcomes the world are you born of God how many of you here are born again why don't you lift up your hands you're born of God oh your earthly father is there very good but you have a heavenly father and you are born of him and you will overcome the world and this is the victory your faith 1 John 5 5 says the victory is available for any of you who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the son of God all you have to do is believe and accept him let us all stand up at this time look unto Jesus there isn't time to read Psalm 91 you can read it at home we can read it in this coming Sunday morning service verse 2 of Psalm 91 we know what it says I will say of the Lord he is my refuge and my fortress my God and him I will trust and the beginning of that psalm it says he who dwells in the secret place of the most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty what is the secret place what is the secret place Psalm 27 verse 5 tells the secret place in the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me he shall set me high upon a rock the church of Jesus Christ is the secret place run into it throughout the coming days you got to come here and receive the power and the anointing and the presence of God needs to touch you and transform you and then you will be able to overcome whatever happens in the world it will not shake you or touch you or come nigh your dwelling place respect and honor the presence of God the house of God be here early don't walk in whenever you want late plan to be here early because the coming days are not going to be as easy as you think we are in the last days you need the power and the presence of God so one last time let us confess just verse 2 of Psalm 91 let us all say together I will say of the Lord once again I will say of the Lord he is my refuge my fortress my God in him I will trust oh he will keep you safe why don't you clap your hands and give God praise give God glory oh his promises will come through his word will come through you'll be blessed you'll be the head and not the tail you'll be prosperous you'll be in perfect good health and in strength you will shine bright oh you will oh be young and flourishing you'll run and not grow weary you'll walk and not faint oh god will do awesome things in your life in the coming days god bless you see you all